of a legion and welcome to my channel my name is ludi and today we'll be doing our eu4 1.30 starting moves guide for poland and this guide will be going over the achievements estates and economy diplomacy and rivals the hungarian war as well as conquest of the teuton lands and how to get your lithuanian personal union and moldavian march as well as discuss the expansion paths available to you after you've secured your initial conquests and subjects and the missions and ideas before we start the video i'd appreciate it if you left a like and commented as well as subscribed and leave the bell button on. YouTube is telling me that only about 21% of you guys have subscribed so if you do enjoy watching my videos then consider subscribing it would really help me out so much. If we can get this video to 750 likes I'm gonna do a giveaway for a copy of a U4 DLC or the base game if you don't have the game already. There are three achievements particular to Poland. The first one Poland can into space where you need to be at level 32 with all three of your techs as Poland. The second is the winged hood Hussars when you need to have winged hussars as your active unit and have more than 50% cavalry combat ability and the third is one king to rule where you need to become an absolute monarchy thus abolishing the sejm. When discussing the estates the first thing you want to do is summon the diet and go for whichever agenda best suits you followed by seizure of land to get rid of the negative modifier that we start off with. The privileges that will give the schlachta are the supremacy over the crown and the monopoly on livestock and we already start with the golden liberty that gives us plus 50% and national manpower modifier. We do want to get rid of the golden liberty eventually and we can do this once we get rid of the elective monarchy that we will be getting through the event that gives us the PU over Lithuania. For the clergy we're gonna give them the oversight by the clergy and monopoly on wool and for the burgers, free enterprises, monopoly on textiles and dyes, as well as the exclusive trade rights for the city of Krakow. Giving all of those monopolies is going to grant us a 7% mercantilism, which is extremely good. And we already own 46% of the trade node in Krakow, but this is not a really great trade node. So we're going to try and improve it for the starting part. And eventually we will want to switch on over to either the Baltic or the Novgorod trade node later on in the game. To boost up our economy in the Krakow trade node, we will be attacking Hungary first that is going to be our very first target and we're going to be taking all of Slovakia which will give us a significant boost to our trade presence in the pest trade node. One more thing we are going to be gunning for is the mine in Hunt which is a gold mine which we really want to directly own as fast as possible and the Polish lands are pretty good. Most of the provinces are either farmlands or grasslands so we really can develop the nation up quite easily if we choose to do so. Playing tall as Poland is interesting but I don't recommend it. It's much easier you're playing wide when you have so many lands you can expand into eventually. When discussing your rivals you should always make the Teutons and the Hungarians your rivals at the start and leave the third one open for whenever we get the PU over Lithuania and we finish our war against the Hungarians so that we have other options into the east which we are more interested in getting as rivals. Alliance wise you should get the Lithuanians as your ally and you should also get a royal marriage with them. It doesn't matter for much since you're gonna get a PU with them in a few months but you're gonna want to keep this slot taken by them so you know that you don't need to use it for something else. Another really good alliance is getting the Austrians early on just so you don't need to worry about them when attacking the Hungarians. It is also a great idea getting the Austrians as an ally just in case they make the Bohemians their rival in which case you can actually attack Bohemia without having to worry about the Emperor joining in. But in our game here it didn't happen so as such we're not gonna bother with Bohemia for the start of the game. You're also guaranteeing Moldavia at the start so keep that guarantee as you're gonna get an event in a few years through which we can get the Moldavians as a march although it is not guaranteed. Another vassal that we're gonna get is the Danzig Republic which will happen once the Teutonic Order gets the event and we are gonna decide to help them out. Our very first war target is gonna be the Hungarians. We want to literally take over all of the Slovakian state simply because we want to get a bigger chunk of the pest trade node and because we want to get the gold mine in Hunt which is definitely gonna support us financially at the start of the game. As such make sure that you get one of your diplomats to build a spy network in Hungary and this is going to help us out with getting a claim as well as help with sieging down their forts. If you're lucky like me you might even get a mission from the Diet that's going to give you a claim on one of their provinces. I managed to get a claim on Tlemcen from the Diet's agenda. Also ensure that you're recruiting the independent army which is a massive 13,000 units army with its own manpower pool. We're going to need them because our army even though it is quite large 
damage. It is going to be draining out of manpower very fast, so we're going to have to complement that with the mercenary army, and we're going to have to reinforce regiments when we're losing manpower. Don't be worried about going over the force limit, it is literally just temporary. Once the successor of Vladislav III event triggers, you need to go with We Need a Jagellon. That's going to make the Lithuanians a junior partner under us and grant us their entire army here. That's going to really help us out against the Hungarians. Once the event happens, we also get the government reform that grants us the elective monarchy, which is a unique type of government that is particular to Poland, in which the heir actually gets elected. So there is a chance that another dynasty can put their heir on your throne if you're not careful with that. You can prevent this by spending 10 prestige and improving your heir's chances by 5%. One more thing you should know is that the majority of the Lithuanian lands and pretty much all of your southern lands are orthodox. So if you like to switch on over to the orthodox faith, it is a good idea since it is probably the strongest idea in, since it is probably the strongest religion in the game. And switching on over to orthodox has a lot of benefits. But you can also stay as Catholic if that is what you wish. It is completely up to you, especially now the Catholics have received quite a lot of buffs in the Emperor update. A lot of the times the Hungarians are going to ally the city of Trent here and they also have Croatia as a PU under them so it is not going to be a tough battle especially since you have the Lithuanians on your side as well and if you're lucky you're going to get the event to make Moldavia your march quite early on thus boosting your numbers even more. Austria sometimes also allies Hungary if that happens then I recommend restarting since it would be quite a tough start without getting the provinces here in Slovakia but it is up to you as not mandatory if you are blocked from expanding into Hungary you can start expanding into the Golden Horde but we were lucky enough to get Hungary so let's attack them and we're gonna send the province of Trenzen as our war goal since it is closer to us. Whilst at war with the Hungarians you should go to your Diplo screen and you should make some of these provinces adjacent to Lithuania as provinces of interest to you which is gonna convince the Lithuanians to start getting claims on said provinces. At the same time start getting a claim on the Teutonic Order and start improving relations with the Mazovians. As expected the event in Moldavia triggered make sure that you support Roman with your coin or with your manpower and you have a 50% chance of getting the Moldavians as a march but it is not guaranteed so it is up to you if you want to restart until you get the Moldavians as a march. I personally don't think it's worth it. If you don't get them as a march you can just conquer them later on after you finish the Hungarians and you finished with the Teutons. In the peace treaty with the Hungarians make sure that you get all the provinces in the state of Slovakia as well as cancel their core on the province of Varazdin just for the extra prestige and dry them up and make sure they don't have any more money after you finish with them. Don't worry about a coalition it's only the Hungarians that can join the coalition against you so the first thing we're going to be doing is we're going to be coring up all of these newly added provinces and we're going to reduce the autonomy and make them full cores after we finish coring. You're also going to rack up a few loans by now so make sure you pay off for your loans. The money you took from the Hungarians should be enough to pay off the loans and we're going to go back to our nation here and start getting ready for the expansion into the Teutonic lands. Now we have a lot more options when it comes to our rivals as I previously mentioned so it really depends on what the situation to the north and to the east is. If the Novgorodians and the Muscovites have not started attacking each other then you can rival one of the two and sweep in once they're at war with each other or you can better yet just attack the Golden Horde which is going to be considerably weakened compared to how it was a hundred years before. Once the Danzig Confederation event triggers join up on Danzig's side as we want Danzig to eat up all of the Teutons since after the war we can just make them our vassals. After you finish the war with the Teutons if you're lucky enough Danzig will have taken all of the lands from the Teutons and if that is the case we simply click our first mission here the Prussian Confederation and booyah Danzig is our vassal and we even get the province of Kelmo for free. This also leads us to a few more missions one of them is going to be reclaim Prussia and defeat the Knights. We're going to do these missions once we've actually integrated the Prussians and since we are at the mission screen let's talk about all of our missions. The left part of the mission tree discusses the affairs with the Teutons and after we've fully integrated them we finish off that part. The right part discusses about the Russians and basically it focuses on us destroying the Russian nations here which is going to give us some manpower, war exhaustion and cav combat ability and diplo relations for 20 years. Some other missions here will focus on developing the Polish nation and dealing with the Sejm. Remember the Sejm is our specific parliament sort of institution and the center 
revolves around our home nation here with the integration of Mazovia giving us way for the Commonwealth and once we do have the Commonwealth enacted we're gonna finish off the second mission the Commonwealth is the nation that you can form as Poland in order to form the Commonwealth you need to have the provinces of Marienburg Danzig Warsaw all of which we're gonna integrate from our vassals you need to have tech level 10 and you need to have the Lithuanians in a personal union or directly own the lands if you didn't get the PU at the start by clicking this button the Commonwealth will appear we will inherit the Lithuanian lands and become probably the strongest nation in Europe it's also gonna give us more missions and ideas the Commonwealth ideas being some of the most OP ideas in the game the early game for Poland really revolves around getting the personal union with the Lithuanians getting the lands from the Hungarians before the Austrians actually get a chance of PUing them and if they don't PU them which is something that normally happens around 1455 or earlier due to their event then you still get a chance of going into Hungary a second time and even taking one province from the Transylvanian area and then releasing Transylvania as a vassal and feeding them back their cores afterwards as well as making a dash for the Balkans by taking directly three provinces which is going to give you access to the Serbian and Bosnian lands here and eventually the big war against the Ottomans really great expansion paths for Poland include the Russian lands after Muscovy takes over the Novgorod lands make sure that you take at least one province I recommend just taking lucky here and then releasing Novgorod as an OPM after they've been eaten up by Muscovy and using their cores on the entirety of what was once Muscovy to recapture and have a big Novgorod vassal having Novgorod as a vassal is extremely good since they are in the Novgorod trade node and they are a republic so it's going to boost your trade income considerably as the Poles you should also be expanding into the Crimean and the Golden Horde lands I would prioritize the Golden Horde simply because we want to cut off the Muscovites before they go into the south Remember to set your own provinces of interest and then your personal union member Lithuania is going to start getting claims on these provinces eventually. Right now they simply got one unlucky but we're not going to be attacking just yet. We want to wait for a bit, get our nation back on its fleet, perhaps even wait for the Muscovites to attack first. Remember to keep improving relations with your various vassals and in 1454 start integrating Mazovia which is your first vassal to be integrated followed up by Danzig and Lithuania after you form the Commonwealth will be inherited. When discussing the idea sets that the Polish should go for, the first idea I recommend going for influence ideas, seeing as you have a lot of vassals and subjects, and influence helps out with that by giving you income from vassals, a liberty desire minus 15, diplo annex cost minus 25, as well as plus one diplo relation slots and plus two diplo rep, and you even get some unjustified demands minus 50%, as well as vassal force limit contribution, double the amount you have right now. This is almost a mandatory when playing as a nation with a lot of vassals. If you're going for a world conquest, I'd switch it over to Diplo Ideas. But if it's not a world conquest and just a chill game, then go for Influence Ideas. As a second idea set, I'd go for Religious Ideas, not only because of the Deus Vult, which is extremely good for Poland since the Protestants are going to start spawning in here. And you also have to deal with the Orthodox and the Muslims around you. So a Religious is extremely good for the Poles. And for your military idea, I'd go for Quantity, simply because you need as much manpower and force limit as you possibly can your troops are really good already and if you focus on cavalry you're gonna have a great time but you do need to go for quantity first or better yet as your first military idea to boost up your numbers so that being said influence religious quantity should be your first three ideas for an optimal commonwealth or poland game i really hope you guys enjoy this video and if you did don't forget to leave a like comment and subscribe for more videos like these in the future as well as leave the bell button on to get notified when i release these videos and i also want to thank my patrons so much i wouldn't be here without you guys if you'd like to become a patron then check the link in the description so until the next one have a great day